call upon our awesome king. Blessed are the people who know the sound of the shofar. In the light of your countenance, of Yahweh shall they walk. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu, melech ha'olam. Asher kitshiyanu b'mistotovitz ivanu, lishmoah chol shofar. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, king of the universe, who sanctified us by your commandments and has commanded us to hear the voice of the shofar. <laughs> Together. Blessed are you, Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with his commandments and commanded us to count the Omer. Today is the 44th day as well as six weeks and two days of the Omer. Elohim, be gracious to us and bless us and cause his face to shine upon us that your way may be known on the earth, your salvation among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O Elohim. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you will judge the peoples with uprightness and guide the nations on the earth. Let the peoples praise you, O Elohim. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has yielded its produce. Elohim, our Elohim, blesses us. Elohim blesses us that all the ends of the earth may fear him. Shema Israel, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad, Baruch Shem Kevod, Malkuto, Leolam Vaed. Hear, O Israel, Yahweh our El, Yahweh is one. Blessed be his name and his glorious kingdom forever. And Yahweh spoke unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbath you shall keep, for it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that ye may know that I am Yahweh that doth sanctify you. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generations for a perpetual covenant. It is a sign between me and the children of Israel forever. For in six days Yahweh made heaven and earth, and on the seventh day he rested and was refreshed. Vesinantam <laughs> You shall love Yahweh, your Elohim, with all your heart, and with all your soul, and with all your might. These words which I am commanding you today shall be on your heart. You shall teach them diligently to your children, and shall talk of them when you sit in your house, and when you walk by the way, and when you lie down, and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorpost of your house and on your gates, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Amen. All right. Julia is going to do our blessing for us. Let's all extend our hand toward the children in the treasure chest. Abba, open your eyes and see the truth. See his name. Amen. And all together say, by his grace, not one will be lost. Amen. Protect and defend you. He always shield you from shame. May you come to be in Israel a shining day. May you be like a 
Sabbath That we may be as one And let all who are thirsty Come and glorify Yeshua Oh, come and magnify the Lamb of God Oh, come and glorify Yeshua shall say before Yahweh your Elohim, I have removed the sacred portion from my house and also have given it to the Levi and the alien, the orphan and the widow, according to all your commandments which you have commanded me. I have not transgressed or forgotten any of your commandments. I have not eaten of it while mourning, nor offered any of it to the dead. I have listened to the voice of Yahweh my Elohim. I have done according to all that you have commanded me. 
Look down from your holy habitation from heaven and bless your people Israel and the ground which you have given us, a land flowing with milk and honey, as you swore to our fathers. Amen. Barakud Adonai, humble rock. Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. Baruch Adonai, humble rock, leolam ba'ed. Baruch Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher b'kar b'nimi kol ha'amim, v'natan l'nu ha'torato, baruch ata Adonai, noten ha'torah. Amen. Bless Yahweh the Blessed One. Blessed is Yahweh the Blessed One for all eternity. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of Universe, who has chosen us from all peoples and given us his Torah. Blessed are you, O Yah, giver of the Torah. Amen. Amen and amen. Y'all may be seated. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 16. So as you're turning there, as we're, we're coming into these seasons. Again, um, it's been, for me, it's been really an awesome journey since this Passover season. Again, and the reason why I'm saying that, it has been glorious and sometimes terrible at the same time but what is that for it is for teaching us to get ready again we're in training for reigning and this is what happens and we do our due diligence to do the best that we can every season and then he and then really and really to open up our hearts to grasp what he's teaching us in this congregation you know i'm in a different place in a season in my life and uh, Cole's not in here, but he's in a different season in his life right now because we got a betrothal fixing to happen for him. And then, so, where do you think his mind is? That's right. It's not up here. So, anyway, but I'm just saying, but this is what's going on. But also, we have Casey and Rachel. They're fixing to get married, too. And even though they're studying the Word and all, but there's still where your mind is, wedding is... It's on what the Father has for them and the new adventure for them in their life. And so what I'm saying, I just use that as an example. Some of us is, is job. Some of us is transition of moving from one place to another. Yeah, new babies. Boy, is that a transition. And, you know, you got new babies and new mothers, and that's all a transition. It's one thing to, you know, come up holding a baby, rocking a baby. It's another thing having your own, you know. And then uh, so it's just... There's a lot of times that even in these seasons that we're in, the Father still speaks to us where we're at. And I have to say this, because Terry mentioned this too. You know, as some of us get older, we're going into the season of being older, and then, you know, hopefully and prayerfully, we always want to be full of sap, you know, like Moses, but some of us don't quite make it to the full of sap stage. You know, but, you know, but the the... Every day that He gives us, we need to glorify Him in every day. We need to be salt and light in every breath and every moment. Because even those of us, the gray heads that's in here, the thing is, is we're, we still have an enormous place in the kingdom of being examples for those who are now just fixing to get married and all of that and then going and helping them not fall into the same pitfalls that some of us has fallen into. Some of the things, I'll just say this. One of the pitfalls I fell into in the natural is trying to have good credit. Sitting there borrowing everything to have a good credit score. Boy, was that stupid. Giving, giving the banks all of this interest money and all of that just so I could have a good credit score. That was dumb. But anyway, I'm just saying these are some of the things that you buy into as a kid when you're, you know, you want to be one who's, living for the day and then also saving for the future and we're going through all of this stuff and then boy i tell you but we're here so use us who has made a lot of these mistakes along the way that we can help you guys not worry about good credit and give them all your money through interest and all of these things we need good character that's right we need to trust the father that he is going to you know, help us through everything. So with that, I t titled this, instead of walking in the Spirit, I mean, 
look, we, there's been a million sermons on this Holy Spirit. Amen. I am not going to tell you anything new today than you probably already heard. But here's the thing. What I'm hoping to do is, is if we're not, because I, I wanted to, I put keep in step. We know how to walk in the Spirit. But my question to you, are we keeping up? Are we keeping in step? Because guess what? Yahweh is marching. Yeshua is marching. The Holy Spirit is marching. Times and seasons are marching. The thing about it is, are we keeping up? If we're not keeping up or we're not keeping in step, we need he, His Torah and His Holy Spirit is calling a cadence. For those that's ever been in the military or in the band or in marching or whatever, there's cadences. They call a cadence for a reason. And that reason is for us to just keep in step. You know, I wish I didn't think about this. Don't do it now, but do it later. You can go on YouTube and you can look up Amish community moving a barn. Okay, if you've ever seen that, there are hundreds of these guys all dressed in black. All got their beards with no mustaches in their hats. And there's this, like, this 100-foot, by a building this big, literally this big. They have boards all the way across it. And they have, they have two guys in the middle on a platform in there. And there's hundreds of these guys. They're in rows. And they're not moving this barn 10 feet or shifting it. They're moving it across the field into another field. And they're hooked under their arms, and they're picking it up. And that guy's calling a cadence, and here they go. And you can watch it, how they're moving a whole barn, as big as this building, if not larger, how they can move that. You ought to see that. It's very, but that's what unity, that's what encampment means. But the Holy Spirit in His Word is calling cadence. Are we in step? Because I can tell you, if, if, if they get tangled up and they start tripping up, guess what? You, you, got, you got a mess. So the Father is wanting a whole community, not only here, but all over, no matter where we meet people, to be in step with His Spirit. Because He's not saying something just here. He's saying it all over to the congregations. So I just wanted to title this, Keep in Step with His Spirit. Okay, Galatians 5. We all know this, but we're going to go over it again. 16, it says this, But I say... Walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. Walk by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit is capitalized, and then we will not be gratifying the desires of the flesh. For the desires of the flesh are against the Spirit. The desires of the Spirit are against the flesh. Can't get any plainer than that. For those who oppose, I mean, for these are opposed to each other to keep you from doing the things that you want to do or really doing the things that we're called to do. Desire. I just wrote down some synonyms of desires, the likeness of desire. Desire, mean, it means urge, longing, craving, thirst, hunger, passions, appetite. So whenever you see the word desire, when it talks about the, the desires of the Spirit, do we have a craving? Are we longing? Are we thirsting after righteousness? You hear these words in the Scripture, are we hungering and thirsting after righteousness? Or what are, because, guys, here's the thing. Go ahead, Tammy, and read. This is Ezekiel. Y'all don't have to go there. Y'all know it. I didn't write it up here, but this is something that you know. 36, and I want to read 26 and 27 right here. Moreover, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit within you. And I will remove the heart of stone from your flesh and give you a heart of flesh. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes, and you will be careful to observe my ordinances. Amen. So Ezekiel was prophesying about this time that happened right after Yeshua's ascension, the Holy Spirit fell. He started putting, he started writing the Torah and the commandments in our hearts and on our minds. 
I just wanted you to see that. You know that. We've said that. We've taught this every season. The Holy Spirit is given to us as our helper. But are we using Him as our helper? And this is why I believe, again, this teaching is one of these very, very important teachings for where we are. You have to take your own temperature in this. Because all the way through scriptures, we see so many times where the Father has given us everything that we need. But do we use it? Or do we just use it? I put down in here, are we just, are we just one in seven people? Just here on Shabbat and we do our thing? Or are we just three times a year people to where we come to the feast and festivals and we give Him His due? Are we everyday people? Amen. We're to be everyday people. We are to be everyday people. And, and we're going to see this as we go through this teaching. So I put down here the main purpose. Now, there are probably other purposes. I just put down some of my thoughts. There's going to be some thoughts that hit you. Write it down. Some of the main purposes of the Holy Spirit is to help us. We don't have to do this on our own. Whenever there are sicknesses or whenever there's issues or whenever we're fighting employers or employees or jobs or whatever, you, you just name it. The Holy Spirit is there to help us get the answers and to be able to walk out whatever the Father leads us. Just like us, we're praying every week. I mean, I start tomorrow. Father, what do you have for us on Shabbat? You know, so he starts ministering that to us. You know, sometimes he'll give it to me on the first day. Man, I'm excited when that happens. I'm stroking when it's Thursday. And I'm sitting here like, what in the world are we doing? Like, this, this, like sometimes he will do that. But he's wanting me to go, and he wants me to be in this journey sometimes. It's just the way it is. But he's, I mean, there again, I don't know how, how long I've been doing this. There's a lot of messages for him to be able to give these messages, and then not totally be the same. Probably, you know, it's just times and seasons it's going to be, but He is growing us. So I definitely cry out for His help, and I will tell you, you will not waste a prayer on me. Okay? Amen. You just keep praying. Also, He helps us to understand. The Holy Spirit helps us to understand. He also helps us to pray when we don't know how to pray. He gives us our prayer language. He also helps us to overcome. So really and truly, Yeshua is saying, I'm gone and I'm going to read a scripture and I'm giving you this helper. And these are the things. I didn't put the word knowledge up here. Because knowledge can puff up his pride. We are to attain knowledge by reading his word. But if you don't have understanding of that word, then we're in error. That's why we have so many different denominations today. But the Holy Spirit is there to help us understand. It is there to help us to pray and overcome. And then I put, what did I do here? Okay, walking in the Spirit means to tap in to the help of the Holy Spirit. We need to tap in to what He's doing. We need to tap in every season, every Shabbat. This is why this Shabbat to me is very, very important. Because this is a Shabbat before a major feast is going to happen. Because it's too easy for me and everybody else to look forward or ahead to what's going to be happening on Friday, the 6th of Sivan for us, as we're celebrating Shavuot. It's a lot easier if we've got dance and we've got all the preparations and there's food and there's this. And like she said... You know, we have a back-to-back. -back. We have a Friday and we have a Saturday. Our minds can get caught up into what we're trying to do to make something happen, and we miss Him speaking to us. And that's key because Him speaking to us, He's going to help us with all the, the logistics. But we need to know what is He speaking here into our hearts and our minds. Amen? So also, the phrase walking in the Spirit can mean that we live by and that we're guided by the Spirit. All right, let's go to Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13. Now, while you're going there, I do want to go back and emphasize this point. I really can't emphasize this enough. 
if we can just slow down a minute and think. For me, it hurts, but I won't think. Okay? Don't laugh. Think about this. Desires. What is our main desires? Because our desires right now, that's what drives us. That's our passions. What is going on in our life right now? Because I can tell you, in my case, in my life, I have to really work hard to make sure, because there's things that I want to do. There's things that brings me pleasure that I would want to do. And are those pleasures lining up with staying in, seek you first His kingdom and His righteousness? Or is it satisfying my flesh? So that's for us to decide, because if we are mostly... If we're mostly on the flesh side, that is, that is opposing what the Holy Spirit is trying to do for us in our life. And I'm going to just tell you, because of who we are as a people, with all of the distractions that we have, it's a lot easier to be on the flesh side of things than it is on the spirit side of things. And this is the reason why these, these teachings like this is so, so important. And, and do you know that, the, that our Heavenly Father just wants to talk to us? You don't have to do thus and thous and this, and you don't have to give him flowery words. You just need to just flat communicate. Just show up and say, Father, what in the world is going on? What is happening? You know, this is just being real. And you know what he would say? I'm glad you ask. Because then he will do, he will show. But if we don't communicate, he's not going to answer. He's not going to talk to us if we're not talking to him. Now, will he come down in an emergency mode? Sometimes he really does, because that's his mercy. But there's a lot of times he lets us walk off the cliff. And then we'll say, well, why did I break my arm? Well, I'm glad you finally asked. It's a little bit late. I wished you had asked before you went off the cliff, and I would have told you that. I would have saved you a broken arm. This is just really the way life works. It's not hard. Our Heavenly Father wants us just to communicate with Him. But what are we doing? Are we giving Him leftovers? Or do we only communicate when we find ourselves so far where the flesh, where the flesh will lead you back to Egypt? And, and, and so what happens... So I'm just saying, these passions and these desires, we all have them. We all have passions and desires. We just need to make sure that our passions and our heart's desires lines up with His Word and His ways. Because if not, they can line back up to the leeks and the garlics and the things of Egypt. If we let that happen. So... Just saying that this is a he Paul is is explaining this to the congregations there because there were a lot of issues here. All right, so now in Ephesians 1:13 it says, In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth. All right, I just want to say this again. What is the word of truth? It's the Torah, because guess what? The New Testament hadn't been given yet. This is Ephesians. <laughs> this is a letter. It had not been canonized yet. So the word of truth that they were teaching was the Torah from, from Genesis to Malachi all the way through, you know, just to the end. The gospel, because look what he called the gospel of your salvation. The gospel of salvation has always been from the beginning. This is not just starting at Matthew. Amen. I just want to drop that into you because in him also, you also... This is why Torah study, this is why the Torah is so important, because this is where our teachings and instructions all come from. We get saved, we start in Matthew, we miss everything. Most people start in John, but anyway, but you miss the actual gospel of salvation that he's talking about begins in Genesis 1.1. Because look what he says. All right, I'm going to go back and read it again. In him you also, when you have heard the word of truth, the Torah... Now listen, I want to back up and say this. The New Testament is much as inspired and sanctified as the old, okay? I'm not saying it, it's not. But I'm just telling you in, in, in context, this is what he's saying here. The gospel of your salvation and believe in him, 
Look what it says. We're sealed. Sealed. What do we do at Shavuot? We, we are sealed during this time. This word sealed has the word as a wax seal as a mark of ownership. So we are sealed by Him. He has His mark of ownership on us. Like with a signet ring. With the promise of what? With the promise Holy Spirit. So it teaches us that when we've heard the word of truth, the very gospel of salvation that we believe, we're sealed with the promise of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is there sealing us. It's there to help us. Because look what verse 14 says. And the reason why I'm saying this, guys, because I just feel that we just take this for granted. I think we just take life for granted. We just take this all for granted. We go through the motions. We go through everything. We don't really realize that the Torah and the Holy Spirit is given to keep us out of pitfalls. But the reason why I believe the body of Messiah as a whole is struggling is because we're leaning on the desires of the flesh. And because we like the desires on the flesh, we try to read His Word and we're trying to figure this thing out intellectually. You can't figure this out intellectually. It don't happen. When it says he takes the foolish things to confound the wise, that's why it's there. He's not going to try to allow us to make this some kind of scientific experiment. It's just not going to happen. Thunders and lightnings, and we see the miracles that happen when we read about the Red Sea party. And a lot of times when you read about these stories, you got all of these people trying to figure out, well, it was this, or it was a... A spaceship, it come through so fast, it just pulled the water apart. And then, you know, you, you come up with all the scientific... Does science work in a lot of cases? Absolutely, because he spoke it into existence. But yet, he comes through with other areas like the Red Sea, like the fire and the cloud that led them. I mean, it just... Led, manna falling from heaven. It just does it. Evolution. Give me a break. Evolution, you're going to tell me that you got monkeys, but then it just, we just went to man. But yet, they're still monkeys. Now, even though man acts like a monkey, that's another message. But, but there's still not a transition. Look, guys, come on, give me a break. You know, and you tell us we're crazy because we believe by faith, and you're going to say that we come from a monkey to a man, but yet it happened during this period of time. Now it don't happen no more. But you still got monkeys and you still got man. Uh, give me a break. So, but people buy it. People buy it, swallow it. Why do they buy it and they swallow it? Because they don't want Yahweh in their life. They do not want to live by the Torah. They want to do whatever they can do to prove it wrong. And that by believing something is so crazy as that. So there's a sealing that happens with us. It's the promise of the Holy Spirit. Look what it says in verse 14, because this is important. Who is the guarantee? The Holy Spirit is the guarantee. Or a down payment of our inheritance. Guys, we need the Holy Spirit in our life. Because it is the very down payment. This is what He has deposited into us. Of our inheritance for how long? It says until. There's until there. Until we acquire the possession of it. See, we have not, Paul is saying it, we haven't, re we haven't received eternal life and walking out to where we, when we get cut, we don't believe. You know what I'm saying? We're not at that place. We're not in immortality yet. So the Holy Spirit is given to us to help us get through every day. Not just one in seven, and not just three times a year. The Holy Spirit is there every day, 24-7, at our beck and call. And He expects us to use that, because that is the very down payment of our inheritance. Until He changes us, and He makes us, and brings us into immortality. And this is great news, because He could have just checked out of here and just left us to fend for ourselves. But he did not do that. 
So what am I saying? What I'm saying is it's a travesty because really and truly most people are not using their down payment. They're not using the very the gifts and the powers of the Spirit. Because why? Because of the desires of the flesh. See, we'll use it wrongly because we're wanting Him. That's why I, I say this all the time. If, if whatever reason, there, look, I'm just as real as it can be. There's times and seasons that I go through, and I don't know why this is, and I don't know what these seasons are, but I can go through a time and a season to where I want a new gun. I just, I just want that dude. Well, it's around October. It's usually a little bit before that because I get a feast gift. So anyway, so that thing starts turning in my mind. Well, then Cabela's and Bass Pro and all of that don't help. Gun broker, all of these things. And then all of a sudden, because they make some nice-looking guns. And do you know that they still just shoot a bullet? You know, the gun that costs $200 shoots, but it don't look like a $1,600 one. But there's something there. And then you get to research, and now you think that for one moment, I'm going to ask my wife to pray about it. That's out. I'm not going to ask her to pray about it, because I can promise you, she will take the catalogs, the phones. <laughs> She'll block Cabela's. You know what I'm saying? She'll block gun broker. I'll be trying to find it, and I ain't tech enough to get back in it. So my thing is this, but I'm just saying, but this is what, this, this is what desires do. Well, what I'm saying is, if I know the answer is no, do you think I'm going to ask my wife to pray about it? No. So what I do, I'm just using this. We do the same thing with our Heavenly Father. When we know the answer is no, we're trying to figure out every way that we can get what we want without asking Him because we know the answer is no. Now, does He mind giving us the desires of our heart? Absolutely, He doesn't mind. As long as we're seeking first His kingdom and His righteousness, He doesn't mind. Because most of the times when we get things, it, we get in trouble with these things. It brings trouble rather than it brings... Because, you know, a lot of times when we fight and we go through these seasons and then we finally get what we want, it sits right there in the closet. Yeah, buy high, sell low. I know Doug's just waiting on the next one. So anyway, it's just... But this is what happens to us because once we buy it and we have attained it, then guess what? The feeling goes away. The desire goes away. There's no more desire because now I have it and it's in my gun safe. And, I, and you know, so... It takes energy to get up off the couch just to go open the thing, trying to remember the combination, just to look at it. Then I don't want to scratch it. Then I don't. Then here we go with that. Yeah, I'm just saying. You now, y'all look at me like I'm the one that goes through this. I know better, because this is the nature of man. This is what we do. This is why the Holy Spirit, our Heavenly Father, wants us to enjoy this life that He's given us. He wants us to enjoy family. He wants us to enjoy one another. He wants us to enjoy all that He's given us. He wants us to do that, but it can't be our gods. We can't have our, that. Can't be our passion is of accumulating stuff because I we got accumulations. We could ball, be called accumulators. So anyway, so He gives us the Holy Spirit back in verse fourteen as a guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire it and and to praise. Of his glory. So, all right, now let's go to uh, John chapter 14. Y'all know this scripture also. This is just, again, his mercy. I'm just going to just read a few things about it. John 14, 15, it says, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I want to stop right there. Before he even mentions giving them a helper, what does he say? If you love me, you're going to keep my commandments. Because if you're not keeping my commandments, it doesn't do me any good to give you a Holy Spirit. Because if you're walking in disobedience, it doesn't do me any good to give you anything. Because you're not doing, you're not, you're not going to, if you're walking in disobedience, 
giving you the Spirit, you're not going to keep in step with the Holy Spirit if you're walking in the opposite direction. So the very first thing He tells them, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And these are not a different set that He's got here, okay? Like some people teach. Verse 16, He says, And I will ask the Father, and He will give you another Helper to be with you forever. Even the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. Why can the world not receive this? Because their, desire, their desires are in total opposition to what the Holy Spirit desire is, according to Galatians that we just read above. Because they war against each other. Because it neither sees Him nor knows Him. It can't not only see Him, it doesn't have a relationship. The desires are contrary to the things of the Spirit. You know Him, for He dwells with you and to be in you. That's why I had Tammy read that scripture in Ezekiel. Ezekiel was prophesying about this time that was to come in their life where the Torah would be written in their hearts and on their minds. The Holy Spirit, the Helper, would be in us. It just wouldn't be moving among us. Look, the Holy Spirit's sort of like like being in Genesis 1-1. I don't know why it's the case. I've heard so many different teachings growing up. Well, they had the Spirit of God in the Old Testament, but we had the Holy Ghost in the New Testament. I'm like, okay, man, you talk about, all right, the Spirit of God and the Holy Ghost. Well, did the Spirit of God die and then it become a ghost? I'm trying to figure out who, why there, are they two? Because they really taught it like there's two spirits. It was almost like it wasn't the Spirit of God was not personable in the Old Testament, but He was really personable in the New Testament. I, I mean, it, well, it's a dispensational thing. But the Spirit of Elohim, the Spirit of Yahweh, is exactly the same. It's His breath. It's, his, it's the Ruach. It, it is not changed. And guess what? He didn't come with a different set of rules. He didn't have a set of rules back here, and he's got another set of rules when he crossed over the page that says New Testament in your Bible. All right, so let's go to Acts 10. So what I did was, there's three areas that we have to be committed to. You know all three areas. One is prayer, the next one is His Word, the Torah, and the last one is obedience. But I just want to share some scriptures with you that I pulled out. I hope that you will really lock in for you as an individual. If you're new here, if you're new to this or whatever, even if we've been doing this a long time and we know a lot of scriptures, what are we doing? Do we just rely on what we've known? No, we have to keep this fresh. We have to keep this going. So the first one is prayer. We have to be committed to prayer because, guys, prayer is the work. This is our lifeline. Prayer is the lifeline. This is not just some kind of spiritual exercise we do. Now, there's something that we've learned. We didn't know this because we wasn't raised Hebraic. But there's, when it talks about praying continually, what does that mean? Okay, but think about this. Praying continually. You're going to do it on the mic? Oh, well, I mean, what are, what are hours of prayer? Nine and three, sometimes 12. So a lot of times, praying continually has to do with the hours of prayer. Okay, it's not that where you would just totally nonstop, because see, that messed me up too. I'm saying, okay, I got to pray every second of the day. Uh, I can't even get my apple fritter down. You know, what, uh, you know how, do you, how do you do this? So it's not, but it's the hours of prayer. So when you're praying in these hours of prayer, there's a continuing, because guess what? While we're praying from 9 in the 9 o'clock hour, guess what? Somebody before you had been praying in the 9 o'clock hour because of the way the time changes. So there's this hour of prayer this continually. So I just want to throw that out there a little bit. Verse 1 and 10. We covered this last year, so I'm not going to cover all of it, just a section. In Caesarea, there was a man named Cornelius, a centurion who was known as an Italian cohort. 
which we know that this is a Roman commander. Okay, he's not a Jewish man. He's a, he's a Gentile. Look at verse 2. This is key. A devout man. In other words, he's a committed man. He's a devout man who feared Elohim. Not Zeus, not Achilles, not their gods. He's, he feared Yahweh Elohim with all his household. So it wasn't just him. He taught all of his household and all of his slaves and all of the people. He taught them. Somehow or another, he got connected. Maybe was he there? I don't know. I mean, this is, this is during the time of Yeshua's death, burial, and resurrection. So during this period, because we're talking Peter, right after the giving of the Holy Spirit. So we're not talking something that happened 200 years later. So, Caesar, what made this Roman commander, this captain or whatever he was, what made him, something happened. Was he there maybe at the crucifixion? Maybe was he there when he saw the darkness? Maybe was he there when the... The earth split, and it split the two. What happened to him? I don't know. Be glad to ask him one day. But something happened, because you got to understand, by him, a Roman commander, to be a believer of Yeshua, his life is in danger. Romans will crucify him, and they won't blink an eye to do it. But yet, this man is serving the very Elohim... Because guess what? Caesar is their gods. You see, you see, all I'm just trying to throw this out there, here's a man who's counting the cost. Because his life can be ending any day if this, this news gets out that he's not, he's not loyal to Caesar like he is to Yahweh Elohim. So it says that this man is a devout man who feared Elohim with all of his house. He gave alms generously. In other words, giving alms, he helped the poor. He's giving up his substance and he's helping the poor. Where am I at? Okay, yeah, generously. And what did he do? He prayed continually to Elohim. First one, we have to be committed to prayer. This man was praying. You could go down at the end of the chapter and it looks like he was fasting and praying for at least four days. Verse 3. About the ninth hour, the ninth hour to us is 3 p.m. This is one of the hours of repair. See, it says, He prayed continually to Elohim about the ninth hour of the day, which is 3 o'clock our time. He clearly saw a vision. In other words, it wasn't bad pizza for lunch, like at Little Caesars, because I guess that's where you can go get pizza if you're a Roman. But, uh... <laughs> Very good. I'm, yeah, y'all got that, huh? Just making sure everybody was checking me out here and y'all wasn't checked out. Y'all did good. That's, that's 90% of you. The other's like, man, I'm hungry. <laughs> About the ninth hour, he, he clearly saw a vision. So now he's praying. He's a devout man. He's praying. He clearly, clearly sees a vision. An angel of Elohim comes to him and says, Cornelius. See, praying, 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 the Holy Spirit is our helper. Yahweh sends an angel to help him. What are you praying? I need to know. I don't know what to do. We're sitting here. Now, also, what is he going to do? Now, he's going to also, poor old Peter. Peter, you go down. He's praying also. But he falls asleep like he did on the mountain transfiguration no he was put in a trance Yahweh did that no Yahweh did that but what I'm saying is is there again there's another prayer and at the same time there's an angel that visit him said you need there's going to be two men's going to come up you need to listen to them you need to go to uh, Cornelius's house don't ask no questions and it's done so what I'm saying is is prayer and the Holy Spirit because guess what and this is why this is how it works guys the angel, do you think the angel couldn't have told Cornelius everything he needed to know? Absolutely the angel could have told, told him everything he needed to know. Angels, they do whatever the Father tells them to do. They don't speak lies. They don't tell jokes. 
They don't do these things. They just speak whatever the Father tells them to speak. But Peter had to learn something too. Peter had to learn because of the house that he was taught in, a house of Shammai, that they hated these people. He had to be taught that the Father loves them too. Yes, they killed Yeshua. And it's fresh in his mind. But do you know what? Yahweh loves them too. And guess what? So Peter had to go swallow pride, swallow everything. He had to learn. So he's probably like praying. Remember like Ananias whenever Paul was on the road to Damascus? Ananias and then, the, then an angel, you know, or the spirit comes to Ananias and says there's a man named Saul of Tarsus. He's over there. We blinded him and all of that. I need you to go and bring his sight back. It's like, man, that ain't a good idea. You don't, ha, don't you know about this? Don't, had you heard? Now, you're going to question Yeshua. You're going to question Yahweh. Do you not know something? But this is what happened. But it just shows you the power and the importance of prayer whenever, and this is, here's the key. He was a devout man. These are not flare prayers. This is somebody who's doing who's obeying the Torah the best that he knows how, he's walking this out and he's concerned. He's devout. Guys, there's a lot of times in our life we say why and why and why. I, don't, I can't tell you all the whys. I don't know all the personal reasons in everybody's life. Yahweh does. I don't. But yet, all I have to say is, is how devout am I? When I'm, when I'm going through my prayers, and how devout am I? Or am I just going through life and then all of a sudden I really need something and I want him to act now like I'm going through a drive-thru because I don't want to wait. You see what happens? So this man was devout. I'm just saying he prayed, continued. This was his routine and the father answered him because he had to work on him like he did Peter. Okay? Think about us. We need to see darkness... We need to see lightning. We need to see a front coming. And then we would say, we might get rain here. You know what I mean? There's a difference in knowing and being... See, I'm, I'm just trying to lay out for us. There's a difference between just going through the motions and being devout and being committed. That's just, yeah, not having doubt. Because look, there is no condemnation because we're growing. But you will see there's sometimes I'm stronger in certain areas than maybe I am the other. That's, that's usually the, the case with most of us. But what are we doing to make, are we in the devout category? That's what really this teaching's about. Here was somebody who was committed to Yahweh, and here he's been praying and praying and praying because there was, uh, you know, like Peter, he went and laid it down in, uh, on a kid that was dead and you know you see all of these things that happens where they just didn't just say it one time they 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 battled with the situation until there was a miracle that happened you know um yeshua yeshua didn't say first thing yeshua said when he went up to lazarus he said roll the stone away he didn't pray he just said remove the stone because if you don't get the stone out of the way he'd pray all day long He's still in there. He come up, you don't ever know. You got to get the stone out of the way. See, faith moves. And that's where knowing by the Spirit what the Spirit is saying, and we have to be, this is why I think a lot of times we get in trouble. And, it's, and I'm trying to be, this is not for condemnation. Because really and truly, we live in a world where we're so busy. Our, we're pulled in so many different directions. Our minds are not totally like it needs to be. This has to change in days coming. If we're going to be able to hear what the Spirit is saying to the congregations. The reason why the church or the congregations in Revelation is there is because they fell into the same situation. Except two of them. Two of them stayed devout. But those two were under heavy persecution. They didn't know they were going to die the next day. So when you're under heavy persecution and all of that, you're going to be more devout than you would be like us flowing when we, we're... We got milk and honey dripping everywhere. All right, so the next one is uh, Psalms 119. These will be fast. 119.9. Let's just read that. It says, 
Now this talking about we have to be committed to His Word, being committed to the Torah. How can a young man keep his way pure? This is the key. We have to, have a, we have to keep our ways pure by guarding it according to your Word. The Torah teaches us how to do that. Reading and knowing what, we, what we're reading. See, that's what the Holy Spirit is there. When you read something, the Holy Spirit is there that you understand what you've read. With my whole heart I seek you. Let me not wander from your commandments. We're talking about keeping in step. There's a walk. Knowing, his, knowing the uh, Torah, in other words, with my whole heart, he's saying, I'm committed to this. I'm committed. Let me not wander from your commandments. I have stored up your word in my heart. This is why this is important of number two. Praying's number one. Number two, if there's nothing, if you're not reading, you're not storing anything up. Let me just say this. It's just like putting up. Like I said, there's a difference between Shemitah and prepping. You know when we talked about that? Because Shemitah is totally believing that he is going to give us a double portion to do. But we are to be prepping. We are to put back. We are to learn and to store. We are to do that. But if you're not storing, if you're not planting, if you don't plant, you don't grow. And if you don't grow, you don't harvest. And if you don't harvest, you don't eat. You see how this works? So what you're seeing here is this. If you don't put the Word in here, there's nothing in here to get from. So when it's time to eat, you can go to your barrel. If you haven't put nothing in your barrel, you can't get anything out of it. It's just the physical and the spiritual is exactly the same thing. So he's telling us that we need to read his word, read his word, read his word, because he's storing that up in his heart that I might not sin against you. Verse 12, Blessed are you, O Yahweh, teach me your statutes. What is the Holy Spirit there to do? To teach us. Same thing. Let's skip down to verse 15 and 16. I will meditate on your precepts and fix my eyes on your, your ways. What do we meditate on? This is all part of what are we thinking about? What is happening? I will delight in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Let's throw that out there real quick. You guys know this. Prayer. Also, the Torah. The last one that I'm going to touch here is we've got to be committed to be obedient. Because this is now the key. It doesn't matter how much you pray. It doesn't matter how much you read. If you're not going to be obedient, everything is a knot. It doesn't matter. Because obedience is the key to the prayer. If you're not going to walk it out, that's why I'm saying you can be here every Shabbat. But if you're not reading and praying, being devout, we need to be obedient every day. Last scripture is James 1.21. Therefore, put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness. Now, can I just say this again? James is writing this to a congregation. And he's telling them this. Put away all filthiness and rampant wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word, which is able to save your soul. So filthiness and rampant weakness, that's the works of the flesh. But it says, but be doers of the word. What is doers? Being obedient. We have to be obedient. We have to walk out, not hearers only, because hearing it, that's why I was saying you can be praying and you can be reading the word, but if you're not putting it into action, it's not manifesting. He is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror, for he looks at himself and he goes astray or goes away. And at once he forgets what he's like. So I'm going to close with this. In this teaching, I'm just wanting us, because our Heavenly Father always does miraculous things on His feast times. He just does. I don't know what He's going to do for this Shavuot for us. But whatever you put into it, you can only expect it, that to get out. So it gives us some days here. But he told them before Moses went up on the mountain, and when they, he said, you need to consecrate yourself. 
you got to take, you got two days that you're going to consecrate yourself, and on the third day, I'm going to come down and I'm going to speak to you. So what am I saying? This is great opportunity for us this week to start consecrating ourselves, having our mind focus not on our stuff. He meets us in times and seasons. I think, honestly, whatever happens, because we're all different and we're all in different places and different levels and different whatever in our life, with the, in our walk with the Father, He's going to, I think, minister to us corporately, but He is going to minister to you individually, to where you are to get, get us ready. Because now it is, we, we got to be, we need to keep in step with His Spirit. I just feel and sense this so much more this year than I ever have before. Because if, you, if we're stumbling, then guess what? It's hard to get, get out of that stumble. It's hard to get back on that straight walk and get in step and be flowing. In other words, our Heavenly Father is sending out a cadence. Let's all march together if we can. Amen? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for this time. And I just pray, Father, that in these seasons, again, prayer, your word, which I know, like we've said before, we can get so busy that we'll just get to it. Just getting to it ain't good enough. And Father, then when we get to it and then we make it to where we become devout, we need to be able to obey regardless of the consequences. Cornelius was a great example a devout man, he was obeying because his life hung in the balance because it was not good for him to be able to, to do that, being a Roman centurion like he was. But, Father, he trusted in you more than he did the flesh. So, Father, I just pray that during this moment, this time, and this week, Father, that you do some supernatural things in our life, individually and corporately, in Yeshua's name. Amen and amen. Thank you, guys. Amen. All together. Sound the great shofar for our freedom. Raise the banner to gather our exiles and gather us together from the four corners of the earth. Praised are you, O Yahweh, who gathers in the dispersed of your people, Israel. <laughs> United States of America, all together. Abba, Father, giver of life, we pray for and entrust the United States of America to your loving care. You are the rock on which this nation was founded. You alone are the true source of life, liberty, and blessings. We cry out for this land to be reclaimed for your glory. May it be that you will dwell among your people. Send your spirit to touch and open the hearts of our nation and its leaders to seek your will and your ways. Grant us the ability and courage to stand for the truth, and may we be that righteous nation you have called us to be. We ask this in the name of Yeshua, our Messiah. Amen. Prayer for the peace of Jerusalem, Psalm 122, all together. I was glad when they said to me, let us go to the house of Yahweh. Our feet are standing within your gates, O Jerusalem, Jerusalem that is built as a city that is compact together, to which the tribes go up, even the tribes of Yahweh, an ordinance for Israel, to give thanks to the name of Yahweh, for there thrones were set for judgment, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May they prosper who love you. May peace be within your walls and prosperity the palaces. For the sake of my brothers and my friends, I will now say, may peace be within you. For the sake of the house of Yahweh our Elohim, I will seek your good. The ironic benediction. Yivarecha ka'adonai v'yishmarecha Ya'er adonai p'navalecha v'yikunecha he saw Adonai, Panavaleko, Bersem Lekosh Shalom.
May Yahweh bless you and keep you. Amen. May Yahweh cause his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. Amen. May Yahweh lift his countenance upon you and give you shalom of peace. Amen. And it's time again for the Kiddush. The blessing over the wine. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Borei Pri Hagafen. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth He's the fruit of the vine, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, and said, I am the bread. You are the branches. Sorry. Got the Hebrew right, just not the English. And the blessing over the bread. Baruch Adonai, Eloheinu Melech HaOlam, Hamutzi lechem min haaretz. Amen. Blessed are you, O Yahweh, our Elohim, King of the universe, who brings forth bread from the earth, and for giving us Yeshua the Messiah, who said, I am the bread of life. It is Shabbat.